Hello everybody, welcome to Build for Lego. Just a quick video to look over the electrical system in the airplane. I had one of our viewers uh, from Germany ask a couple of questions and I started writing a reply and then I thought I should maybe make a quick video on this, it'll be easier. So the question was, um, well he mentioned that he's interested in a, purchasing a Titan IO340 engine for his RANS S21. Um, I think that's a great idea, I love that engine. It's it's light and it's it's powerful, it's, it's a great setup. Um, and also that he's using a dual PMAC system similar to what I do, it's what I use. And he was curious about uh, why I also had a, a backup battery, an essential bus, and a second alternator. Um, and how all of that works. So the, as some of you may know, the PMAGs are an electronic magneto system and uh, they take power off of the magneto gears on the back of the engine. So they have an internal generator. So they don't need different from other uh, electronic um, ignition systems. They don't need uh, external backup power. They do still need um, ship's power uh, for startup and for uh, idle operations when there's not quite enough speed on the gears to keep them going. Um, but in flight, uh, they transition automatically to their gen their internal generator so that they're not actually needing uh, ship's power. Um, but the um, IBBS and essential bus system and second alternator are mostly there for the avionics. Um, I have a fully electronic stack, uh, so there's no steam gauges, um, no mechanical gauges. I have the two Garmin G3X systems and um, a number of other electrical systems. So you can look here on the, I have an electrical wiring diagram, and this is a simplified version um, of the actual wiring of the aircraft. This I keep in the airplane. It's it's a little small laminated. It's about half a letter size sheet that I that I have in the airplane. That's laminated. It's in a pocket on the side, so that if I have electrical issues that I need to troubleshoot, I don't need to remember um, everything that's going on on the in the electrical system. I can take a, take a glance at this and have an idea of, of what's going on. So on the left, there's an endurance bus, and then on the the middle and the right are a main bus. These are just the two the, the two fuse blocks uh, on the main bus. The endurance bus are the fuses, I'm sorry, are the breakers that are on the panel on the right hand side that you may have noticed. And the main bus are fuses that are actually behind that on a little shelf that uh, swivel, swivels down. Up top you can see the battery, uh, the main battery, the contactors, and the alternators. So the main battery um, connects to the uh, battery contactor, which is the main battery switch. Um, excuse me. And the battery contactor then connects to the starter contactor. And the alternator, the main alternator, the 60 amp plane power is connected here. So when the alternator is making power, the power is going to the main bus on both, both fuse blocks on the main bus. And of course you can turn on um, the alternator with the alternator switch and etc. Um, without the, the battery contactor being on. Um, let's see. And, uh, and then there's the backup alternator, which is an 8 amp. It's only 8, amp, eight amps. And it's enough to power most of the avionics on the endurance bus. Um, in the case that I have an alternator failure for the for the main alternator, I turn on the second alternator. I don't keep them on at the same time because they're so different in um, the amount of power that they can put out, and the voltage would have to match exactly for them to, to properly share load. But uh, I keep so then I would turn this one on, and I would turn off the master switch to turn off the the alternator and then turn off the battery contactor to turn off the main bus, uh, which has all of these items. So you notice on the endurance bus, I have um, a trim trim for the, the, the aircraft, so pitch and, pitch and roll trim. I have the servos for the autopilot. I have COM1 for the GTN, the GPS1 for the GTN. You'll notice that the, the GTN actually has three different uh, power inputs, COM1, GPS1, and 
GTM nav over on the right side over here. I have tested this and ran it by Garmin that I can power down the map board on the GTN. Um, the GTN gives it a warning and complains about it, but it still functions on the common GPS side. Um, the nav side is probably not using a lot of power anyway, but it was just the one way that I could load shed a little bit. The boost pump is on here. Of course, the boost pump uses a good bit of, good bit of power um, when it's running, so the boost pump is usually off. And uh, the air ink box that connects the GTN to the, to the G3X system. I have engine sensors, the PFD, the primary flight display, which is the one in front of me. Uh, the GSU-25, which is the um, AHARS, the, 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 the sensor for attitude and pitch and, and all that kind of stuff. The GMC-307, which is the autopilot um, knobs on the, on the display. And that's it for things that are here. Um, you'll also notice that there is an additional backup battery. This is the IBBS that powers just these items. Engine sensors, PFD, GSU-25, sorry, and the GMC-307. So if everything else goes dark, I still have a backup battery that will give me about 45 minutes on these items, which um, arguably are all I need to land the airplane. Well, granted, I don't need any of this to land the airplane, but if you're in IMC, this gets you out of the clouds, hopefully. The reason the GMC-307 is here is because it provides, the GMC-307 being in the system provides um, a flight director, which can be very helpful in IMC under a uh, high workload. Um, the flight director are the little bars. I use the, the dual queue, which is the, the cross where they move independently. Um, and some people like the little command bars that do that. Um, it's, it's just a workload reduction uh, system. Uh, you'll notice that I also mentioned, uh, I also marked off where I have voltage sensing. It's part of the engine sensor system. I can measure voltage at different spots and see um, how the electrical system, how healthy the electrical system is. Um, additionally, the main bus and the endurance bus are tied through a diode, so they will receive power if the, so this bus will receive power if the battery contactor is on. Um, but it won't feed power this way. Um, there's a there's an e-bus relay over here so that I can turn on the endurance bus without having to turn on the battery contactor. So there's a switch. It's one of the three switches you may have noticed. I have um, master, IBBS, and e-bus. So master, of course, turns on the battery contactor. IBBS turns on the backup battery over here. And e-bus turns on this this relay over here. Uh, you, so you'll notice on the main bus, everything else is here, and everything else has its own um, fuse. I try and uh, try and have no uh, doubling up on fuses, mostly because I have the space, um, the bus space. I have two 16 fuse um, bus blocks, and in addition to the endurance bus. And you'll notice that the 16 fuse is not fully populated. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So there's four extra spots over here um, that I can add stuff to. So you can really see everything that I've got on the system um, just by looking at this diagram. So it's an easy way for me to glance and see, you know, if I have an electrical system, okay, can I turn this switch off and what am I going to lose, right? And I can look at it and say, okay, that's all, all good. Um, You'll notice there's a big block here for a JD27. Uh, that's one of Garmin's uh, switching LRUs. And it also provides keep alive power, which is if there's a voltage dip, um, because you're starting the aircraft, for example, there could be a voltage dip. Uh, it just provides keep alive power to the MFD. Uh, the, these guys have keep alive power through the backup battery, so that's not necessary for there. But yeah, so here is the electrical system. Um, the reason for all this redundancy is I do fly uh, myself and my wife in instrument conditions in this aircraft. And we do go on long trips, and um, I wanted some redundancy. It is a fully electrical system. I need. Uh, we wanted to make sure that if there are electrical issues, uh, there's redundancy, and you can get out of IMC. Um, one interesting bit here that I haven't mentioned: uh, the G5 is way over here on the main bus. As many of you guys might know, the G5 also has a backup battery that I believe Garmin claims will last over an hour. Um, and I have it on the main bus. 
I've considered in the past moving this to the endurance bus, um, but I don't know that I need the extra load on the endurance bus. I don't, because this will last, I believe Garmin says one hour. For some reason in my head now, I'm actually thinking they say two hours. But regardless, if I have an electrical failure, I'm going to get out of IMC and land the airplane at the clear at the Cliffs Airport and troubleshoot it. Don't mess around in IMC. <laughs> um, so I figured keeping it here with an hour plus is sufficient. But yeah, um, thanks for watching. There are more videos coming. I did record a uh, an instrument procedure um, today, uh, and I'm hoping to edit that in the next day or so and post it. You guys have a great day. Thank you.